How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to talk about the Semyang 35 to 150 and see what's the deal with that. So let's jump right into it. So Samyang came out with their own 35 to 150, which is basically a cheaper clone from the Tamron 35 to 150. The major difference that you're going to find out when it comes down to both lenses is that the Tamron is $18.99 versus the Samyang is $13.99. Now, does it mean that it's better or they cut a lot of corners because of the cheaper build? Well, it's all up to your interpretation of what you're wanting in a lens. From the tests that I've seen from people doing, because sadly, Samyang has not responded to my inquiries to be able to get a loaner test lens so I can put it against this one. I'm gonna have to kind of go by what other people have done since I've had some people ask me and once the, the, the lens was released, if I thought it was gonna be a major thing, what did I think about it? So I thought it'd just be easier to make a little video about it. What I've noticed in the videos that I saw is that to be honest, they kind of go up to each other's standards when it comes down to the autofocus testing, the quality and everything between the performance of the image quality. The builds are a little bit different in the aspect that the Samyang's a little bit heavier, not by much, but just enough. And it also has one less custom button that you have with these ones. So that's the only major difference because it was kind of funny to me to see, but Samyang just wholeheartedly went out and stole the idea from Tamron with the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 basically the same build they look almost identical minus like one custom button so it just kind of doesn't make sense to me why you would come out with the exact same copy of a lens but it also does make sense look capitalism you're always going to find people stealing your idea to either sell it for a more a premium because they know how to market it better with their you know brand awareness or they're going to make it cheaper to cater to that customer service that may not have the budget to be able to afford the more expensive brand you're always going to have those different tiers so yes of course that makes sense why they would do that but at the same time is you want to stand out with the innovation when it comes down to the product which i'm not seeing from you know samyang they just blatantly copied tamron and said yes i mean i guess don't reinvent the wheel when it's you know perfect but at the same time maybe bring something new to the wheel to make it even better i mean look at michelin but that's besides the point we're not going to talk about that one but you get my drift so i'm curious to see it's just is it something more enticing for people to go into the samyang because it's 13.99 versus the tamron being 18.99 or do you respect the branding more of tamron do you think it's more trustworthy do you think it's better quality overall when you see tamron or do you think it's just another third-party lens that you're just not really caring as long as you get something cheap and efficient that works best with your budget that's something that i'm always curious to know because people's thought process when it comes down to different types of setups is because of their budget most of the time rather than the quality of what they can bring out to the table we all wish we could just have all the g master lenses and they were the perfect focal length that we would want but at the same time is do we want to acquire too much gear do we want to spend some, you know a kidney and a lung for it maybe not so i don't know but that's just kind of interesting to see that samyang just decided to just bring the same lens that tamron already has but in all honesty, the Tamron 35 to 150 has been one of the best lenses that I've ever owned. And it's one of my favorite lenses to use every single time. That's the reason why I condensed down from having any prime lenses to just this lens. So now if I could have done it for cheaper with a 1399 option and it has the exact same, you know, everything outcome of it. Well, maybe I would have gone with a 1399 when it, if it would have came out at the same time. That's why I'm always curious to see that most of the time these lenses, they have minor things here and there. They're just like differentiate them, but mainly it's about the price point. Like you have the Sigma lenses, how they have the 24 to 70 to compete with the G master lenses, as well as any other kind of 24 to 70, even Samyang has their own. So it, it makes me curious to know that if people are really just going to want to go with the Samyang because of, you know, they, they've had their own Samyangs before, or is it seen as a lesser? But for me, it's just, I think the 35 to 150 range is going to be very popular because most people like to have that 35 millimeter range. That's probably like my favorite focal length anyway, but having that excess, you know, telephoto side of lens is great. So Samyang is obviously doing something great because they probably saw the popularity of this lens. I mean, to be honest, look how many videos I've done on this lens because people keep asking me new questions about it or 
wanting to see some shoots that I've done with this lens. So it makes sense. It's uh, something that's become somewhat regular on my channel, which I mean, it's great to see that because I use this lens for everything. But it also kind of begs to differ the question into that aspect is, should they have done something different or should they have just, you know, copied it because it just, it is what it is? What do you think about that? I'm actually curious to see if you thought they should have done a different focal range or something a little bit more different than just blatantly copy Tamron. But overall, I mean, the, the autofocus performance that I saw on videos and just the image quality and most of everything were pretty fairly similar that I don't know how to justify Tamron's 1899 price versus the 1399 price besides just marketing and branding. The only cool little thing as well is that you can update and do whatever through the USB kind of connection section right here rather than having to have the physical thing from the Samyang, which it's only like 50 bucks. So if you add it up, it's just, you know, not too bad It's 1450 total versus 1899. But at the same time is if it's very similar, you know, is it going to be much of a difference to go with Tamron versus Samyang? Which one would be best for you when it comes down to the price point and what you see of the specs of the lens and the performance of it? I would love to know your thoughts on that and, you know, leave always a comment down below to discuss a little bit more further to know your thought process when it comes down to your lens selection, because for me, it's a little bit different. I like to see what I'm going to get the best bang for my buck with the performance, the quality, but ease of use, and also with the guarantee that it's going to be a good product. So I've never had a Samyang lens, but I'm also curious just to know if other people have used them. Are they happy with them? Have they had any issues? And I know I've read some people talk about them, but I don't hear that often. So very curious to see your thought process on that. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share this video to the friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.